The glyptodon is a herbivorous prehistoric creature about the size of a small car that weighed two tons and is related to armadillos. To draw your glyptodon, you're going to begin by doing the curve of the top of the armor plating and a slightly less curved line for the underneath. Then you're going to join these two with another curved line. This will be where the neck and head emerge. Now for the neck and head. It's like an oval with a pointy bit at the front for the mouth. Now follow the curved line for the underneath bit of the body, following the armour plating round, with a curved triangular pointy tail. The eye and ear. Now for the legs. Weighing two tons, you need very strong, sturdy legs. Because you're such a huge creature and you're a herbivore, you need some strong claws. On top of their head, they also had armor plating for protection. The Glyptodon is drinking from a stream and behind him is a caveman, a hunter. Draw his head, just his body which is hiding behind some rocks. Have a go drawing his raggedy scraggedy hair, large forehead and nose and bearded face. Here's part of his arm, the rest is behind the rock. His leather clothes and his other arm is resting a spear on his shoulder as if he's pondering and thinking how to capture this beast. On the other side of the Glyptodon are some bushes, the stream, and then peeping out from some of the bushes is another hunter. Get his scraggly hair in again, fierce looking eyes, large nose and a concentrated mouth. Behind that you can plot in the hills, a tree and any other details. Use small circles to put in the details along the edge of the armour plating. Now put in the armoured spikes along the glyptodon's tail. Paleontologists believe that male glyptodons used to swipe each other in battles with their tails. Glyptodon's armour is made of over a thousand tiny bony plates called scoots, which are fused together to form the armour plating over its body. To colour this effectively, you're going to need to layer different colours of coloured pencil over each other. Start with the lighter layers and then use black and very dark brown to put in the real deep shadows. Here under the body, very deep shadows. Using black, browns, light oranges and greys, you can build up a variety of colours that look like skin. No one exactly knows what a glyptodon skin was like. Perhaps it was furry, maybe it was scaly. But here's an idea. Around the leg areas and underneath the glyptodon's body, there will be many deep shadows. This is because the bright sky with the sun behind is the other side of the glyptodon. Therefore, shadows will be cast this side. The other additional interesting fact 
is that glyptodons were believed to be colorblind and therefore often came out to hunt at twilight when the light was fading in the sky and the shadows were darker. Using a sharp black and colour pencil, go round each individual armour plate. This will bring them out and give detail. Later we can add colour to each one. Now the first layer of blue for the stream. After this layer we're going to add the shadows with black under the plants by the stream's edge. Using black and dark blues we're going to deepen those shadows by the water's edge and the shadows of the plants that fall on the water as well. Now with deeper colours again, building more and more layers in, one on top of the other. Here a light grey working into the blue of the water. Now working some shadows with the grey over the shell of the glyptodon. Using a zigzag motion at different angles, with a mixture of black, dark grey and light grey, you can work into the rocks in front of your caveman. Like the stream, we're going to build up layers in the sky, first with the light blue and then working in some white over it. We're next going to add some depth to the picture. The background is far away, some hills perhaps. So we're going to use a dark blue to show this. Often things in the distance lose their detail and they become bluer in a landscape the further away they get. The slightly closer areas of trees we're going to put in in green and as we get closer towards the foreground that green will become brighter and brighter. In the midground it will be a middle green. Here you can see the built up layers of foreground, midground and background and you may even spot the reflection of the sunset on the glyptodon and on the rocks. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learnt more about these unusual creatures. If you liked it, do hit the thumbs up button or you could subscribe to my channel. Or you could follow me on Instagram at Nash Henkel Art.